And that's right. We are back. World Youth Day rocks. Uh, collaboration between worldyouthday.com and wydcentral.org for another episode uh, covering all things World Youth Day. I am Dario Mobini, joined by my good friend, Deacon Pedro. How are Hello. you? Oh, good. Getting ready. Yes. Uh, yes. Still do, still uh, having that beard, you know, like still growing said. the beard. It's a Canadian thing that I know that it's not just a Canadian thing growing out the beard right before a major event. But hey, you know, yeah, it's yeah. got to get used to it. There's a lot of things happening right now in Lisbon. A lot of mo a lot of moving is happening in Lisbon from the, uh, you know, the, the grounds being established, like they're constructing the stage. We are almost a month away from mm -hmm. the start of World Youth Day, which means now a lot of people are moving fast and things are coming out quick and news and updates will be coming out in a reasonable fashion. Not like what it was a couple months ago, as you remembered, uh, you know, that we, we would have nothing to share except for like, hey, you know, but at, as we prepare, get, hang on, there's yeah. things that are going to come. Um, I just found out that the the Pilgrim Kit is going to be released. Information about the Pilgrim Kit will be released today. Today being uh, Tuesday, uh, June twenty seventh. I believe they'll do it later on their uh, Lisbon social media. Lisbon twenty twenty three. Uh, underscore en for English, underscore it for Italian, underscore pt for Portuguese, and so on. Yes. On, on their social media, on Instagram, they will be releasing details of what is inside that pilgrim kit. But um, Bishop Americo, the director of uh, the World UTA Organizing Committee of Lisbon, was in Rome to deliver the pil the first pilgrim kit to the first registered pilgrim for Lisbon, which was Pope Francis. Yeah, that's a tradition. Yes. And, you know, just I, I was digging into that and thinking like, my gosh, like we forget that there's going to be some records being broken here. Oh, the, yeah. Right. Not, not only will, is Pope Francis 87, um, which makes him pretty darn old. He will not be the oldest pope reigning in the in history of the church. Uh, that um, has a record that has been uh, kept by Pope Leo the 13th at the dawn of the beginning of the 20th century. I mean, he was at towards the end of the 19th century. Um, but, uh, and Pope Leo XIII never traveled outside the Papal States. Remember that at that time it was still the Papal States. It wasn't Vatican City. Vatican City did not become Vatican City until 1929 with the Lateran Treaty. But Pope Francis leaving the Vatican to go to Portugal will be the first time i guess the oldest it will be the oldest pope to ever travel outside of vatican city yeah it's crazy because we forget that john paul i mean john paul died when he was 82 i think um and and benedict resigned bef when he was you know he he recently died he was 90 92 i think um 94 but uh but he wasn't pope no he had already resigned he resigned almost 10 years ago 10 12 years ago 11 years ago so uh um yeah we forget because pope francis is a little he looks healthier than than john paul ii did but he's much older he's 87. and, so, and he had a major surgery so don't don't consider the fact that he's not going to be jumping up and down for you no no, no. <laughs> <laughs> he will be excited to be with the young church but yes. I, I don't know you know it don't be disappointed uh if you see him in a wheelchair and you see him you know very minimally in the contact of young people and it's not because he doesn't want to it's because of his health and but but it's exciting nonetheless because he made a video uh and this is what this pope has been doing recently he's just i think his secretary has says hey uh, holy father we have a request uh can you make a quick little video? So he's like, okay, take your phone out. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's what they're doing because every time I see these videos, they look a little raw, unedited, unscripted. Yeah, yeah. He's off the cuff. I mean, he's, you know, he doesn't like, and I think he made a video one for this young girl who wrote a letter to him about, you know, she, she's suffering through some um, medical issues and, you know, and he made a video for her and directly to her. And it was like a very beautiful video that was posted all over the all over the web. But this one was very interesting. So uh, let me share this video with you guys so you can see this. Uh, Pope Francis uh, made a video uh, to uh, welcome um, people to World Youth Day. He's very excited that World Youth Day is, is coming. Um, and something that I think a lot of people are um, not realizing, like they're worried 
is the Pope going to be there? You know, because he just had major surgery. Granted, very good question. But I think having to hear his response will hopefully give you uh, a little bit of a peace of mind, right? Uh, so here's the uh, video. It's it's you can find it on the Lisbon website, um, and it's actually titled "Pope to Young People: I Will Be With You." <laughs> <laughs> so here's the uh, here's the video. Let me get this uh, out of the way so we can kill this. There we go. And it's just typical that he always will do it in Spanish with English subtitles. So for those of you guys on the SoundCloud, I'm sorry you won't be able to uh, hear us speak the English subtitles, but you're going to have to go online. I'm going to put the link to that video on there as well so you guys can see that. But on the SoundCloud, you're going to hear it in Spanish. O van a seguir la jornada desde lejos. Pero la jornada es un punto de atracción para todos. En este momento es el punto donde todos tenemos que mirar. Los jóvenes tienen que mirar. A ustedes, jóvenes, adelante. Faltan 40 días como una cuaresma hasta llegar al encuentro de Lisboa. Yo estoy preparado, ¿eh? Yo ya tengo todo en la mano porque tengo ganas de ir. Algunos piensan que por la enfermedad no puedo ir, pero el médico me dijo que puedo ir. Así que voy a estar con ustedes. Adelante, los jóvenes. Y no le hagan caso a aquellos que reducen la vida a ideas. Pobre gente, han perdido la alegría de la vida y la alegría del encuentro. Recen por ellos. Pero ustedes con toda la vida, con los tres lenguajes de la vida, el lenguaje de la cabeza, el lenguaje del corazón y el lenguaje de la mano. Lenguaje de la cabeza para pensar claramente lo que sentimos y lo que hacemos. El lenguaje del corazón para sentir bien profundamente lo que pensamos y lo que hacemos. Y el lenguaje de las manos para hacer con eficacia lo que sentimos y lo que pensamos. Adelante, coraje y hasta Lisboa. Wow. What are your thoughts? Wow. Wow. Um, talk about off the cuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um, yeah it's like he hit he hit all the all the marks um yeah i i i'm with everybody else if they're seeing it for the first time i'm seeing it for the first time um yeah i love that i i, I love that um yeah he's gonna be there and i didn't never doubted that he was planning on going but it's so good that he addressed exactly the concerns that people have hey and the doctor said i can go so i'm going and i'm ready and he threw in the backpack in there almost like an afterthought but it was like that was the whole purpose of the video is to show that he's got his backpack oh um, yeah yeah so so uh yeah it was very well done and then meaningful yeah and if you don't know pope francis is uh apostolic yeah, journeys he usually carries a bag with him as he goes up to the yeah, uh, he does to the to the stairs to his the little brief flight i'm curious if that's going to be his backpack for lisbon yeah I'm curious if that's yeah. good. Anyways, Interesting. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a good feeling uh, to have assurance from the successor of St. Peter that he will be present amongst the young people. How much presence will that be? That's yet to be determined, but his presence in Lisbon will not only be for World Youth Day, but it's also an apostolic visitation for the people of Portugal. Yeah. So it is a dual purpose trip. And that's what we talked about in the last uh you know, our last show that, you know, he is also visiting people uh, for uh, the Portuguese people. So he, there is a lot of events planned for his on his schedule does not mean that he will not spend time with young people. He will. He will be at the opening ceremonies of World Youth Day. He will be at the uh, Via Crucis and he will be at the vigil and the final mass. Yeah, of course, that's yeah. the most important part. But the most important also is the encounter itself, which brings us to this episode, which is the part two, I guess you could say, of the Rise Up Encounters. Um, we talked about the first Rise Up Encounter, looking at the ecological discussion forum by focusing on the papal encyclical Laudato Si. Uh, and today we're going to look at the second of the three. Um, these are uh, the three days of catechesis. This is planned for day two. Uh, remember, very similar format to what we talked about. There's a lot of discussion forum, a lot of data collection 
And then ultimately we'll show you how all that works out for the, again, for those of you guys listening in to the SoundCloud, please take a look at our YouTube channel so that you can see the video and see how uh, we go to the uh, Lisboa.2023.org uh, website to take you to uh, where you find these encounters, the documents themselves, and ultimately the Google Forms. Yeah, and again, so a reminder or for people who are hearing this for the first time, there are three catechesis days. These are major events that take place at every World Youth Day, the Pilgrims Register, and so Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, and Friday morning. There are three sessions. Traditionally, the bishop speaks. This time, they're turning the tables around a little bit. There will still be a bishop, um, but maybe the bishop won't be the one leading the, the, the presentation, but the bishop will be there to address questions and maybe give a little bit of a reflection. The focus is a synodal approach, um, synod meaning walking together and the, the church right now is in the middle of this major synod meeting of bishops talking about synodality which means how the church walks together with the laity and so that's why they've chosen to do the catechesis in this format so it's not just a bishop talking to young people but it's a dialogue and so it's a conversation so there's been questions um, being sent and people filling out questions and the whole point of doing the preparatory sessions beforehand is so that you can fill out the form afterwards and send it in because then that feedback is going to be used during the week of World Youth Day during the sessions. Um, not sure exactly how that's going to work, but that's the plan. Um, so as Dario said, the first uh, Rise Up Catechesis was on, uh, on uh, care of our common home, uh, focusing on the encyclical Laudato Si. And this second one is focusing on the second and Pope's second encyclical uh, uh, Fratelli Tutti on social friendship, which is an interesting concept that I don't think anybody had used that expression, social friendship, before the Pope wrote the encyclical. And can I just say, Dario, so I was just in Rome uh, about two weeks ago, and there was a big um, a Fratelli Tutti event that, in fact, had to do with, with farming, which is interesting because there's a huge overlap between Laudato Si and Fratelli Tutti. Because when we when we talk about caring for God's creation, we're not just talking about caring for the for the natural ecology. Right. It also talks about caring for the human ecology, and that's social friendship. That's where this whole thing comes in, um, that we care for each other. And the hashtag, I don't know if you remember, Dario, but when the encyclical came out, so Fratelli Tutti, if you tra translate it to English, it translated as brothers all, and that was just not a good translation in English. No. no. So then they started using brothers and sisters all, which was kind of better, but still not great. Now the hashtag that they were using was not alone, Ooh, which is, in, it is interesting. So I'm wondering if that hashtag is going to continue being used as this idea of social friendship, because the whole point is that as humans, as fraternal beings, right. we're not alone because we're with each other and we're supposed to be with each other. So uh, just keep that in mind as we go through through this uh, this particular session on social friendship. Great point. Great point. And for those of you guys who don't know how to get to that, you go to the Lisboa 2023.org website, go to prepare, uh, and then you'll find the Rise Up um, Encounter uh, link on the left side of the page. Click Rise Up Preparatory Encounter. It will take you to this website. And remember, uh, this page, right, and there's there's two parts already. So you have to go through the first one, integral ecology, which we already talked about. Social friendship is the next. So that's where you get that uh, page. And again, as Deacon Pedro mentioned, it's talking about Fratelli Tutti. There is a, a short video. We're not going to be watching the video because uh, of time, but there's a short video that introduces the topic. But what we want to do is go right into the, the consulting of the guide to help you prepare yes. for that meeting. So you'll see there's two links there. I've opened both links up already for you. So there's the encounter link. Don't ignore the fact that it should have been done in May because some people are probably like, we're just starting. That's fine. Yeah, that's uh, fine. Yeah, the, 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 the first link here, if you click on guide, it will take you to this guide. And this is what we're gonna look at right now. Uh, the guide for the second Rise Up encounter session to be done prior to World Youth Day. Yeah, so as we did with the, when we were going through the catechesis sessions, the, the 10 catechesis sessions, so the guide will give you as a, as a leader, an idea of how to prepare your sessions. And again, it's, it's a suggestion. Um, although I think that there's a lot more information in these guides than there, as there were in the, in the catechesis, sorry, in the preparatory meeting guides. So it gives you a suggestion, uh, what materials you need, 
um you need to have the backpack if you don't have a uh, i mean obviously you might not have your lisbon backpack yet because you're not going to get it until you get to lisbon but uh so grab a backpack or grab a backpack from panama or krakow or i still have my toronto 2002 backpack <laughs> I, I think i have about 10 of them um, <laughs> um and then there were these cards that were written with the themes of the three proper the, the three catechesis sessions so integral ecology social friendship and mercy and we're going to start the meeting uh, by pulling out that social friendship card. Um, and as in the previous uh, meeting, this one also begins with the listening and the singing or the reflecting with the Lisbon World Youth Day hymn. Um, and here we have the words in the international, um, the international version. Yeah, there where it says get set. Uh, so it begins with the World Youth Day Lisbon uh, theme song. Yeah, they, they translate him. A uh, theme song is the, the proper English translation, I, I think, but it's the yeah. hymn. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to practice it too. because No, he... it doesn't. And in fact, that was at an event on Sunday at a, a, a Chinese parish, actually not far from here. And they were having a parish bazaar. And of course, the youth group was doing a lot of the animation. And next thing I, I heard the uh, the Krakow song, no way. It's sung in English. And then I heard them oh, sing sung in English. I was going to say, if they sung it in Polish, you should have given them. A no, little... no, 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 no. And then they sang the Panama the theme song. Um, and then they sang the Lisbon song. And it's the first time I've actually heard it sung in a parish. But wow. I'm sure a lot of a lot of uh, music groups are already singing in the parish. Um, and uh, we're going to get to hear it lots of times. So that's a great, uh, uh, whether you have a recording and you listen to it and you reflect with it, or you get everybody singing it, or you get everybody joining in, at least learn the refrain in Portuguese. And yes. then you can sing the verses in English, or if you are really keen, you can learn them in, in all the separate languages, which is the version that you have here, uh, the international version. And then you dive right in. So there's a video, the social friendship video. I'm not sure if this is the same video, Dario, as the one that's on the uh, on the actual page, the one you mentioned originally. No. But you just click on the, either use the QR code or click on that link, social friendship hope video. And uh, it's a... Uh, uh, it's sort of a little video to to get you going uh, for the these videos. If you don't if you don't remember, these are what they call the Pope video. These are special videos made by the Holy See once a month yeah, uh, the, on specific topics of people's choosing. Right, and and yeah. yeah, you're right. It used to be the papal intentions as well, but I think the Pope also expanded that a little bit. And yes. so you see the social friendship element of that. That's the papal video that you'll be watching. So if you click on that. Cool little logo. You'll see the logo of uh, Lisbon right in the middle yeah, very cool. of this QR code. And yeah, you would be able to see that video. Make sure that you have uh, Wi-Fi in the room working uh, because, it, it, you, granted, having this as a PowerPoint or as a uh, slideshow, great. But then have the you can either have the participants click on the QR code and do it themselves. And maybe and maybe that would be a good practice for what will be like when you're in Lisbon, because there's going to be a lot of QR codes in Lisbon, a lot. Yeah, there's going to be a lot. And hopefully yeah. uh, there's also going to be a lot of data. Um, <laughs> um, so <laughs> so in, the video, in the video, you're going to uh, hear a, a concept that, I, I mean, I really, I mean, I'm sure I, I would have read it when I read the encyclical way back when we read the encyclical, but I didn't really stood out. But, but the, the idea of shadows of a closed world. And that's a very interesting idea because we're talking about how we failed in caring for each other. And so the shadows of a closed world is the theme that we're being asked to reflect after we listen to the Pope's video and to try to recognize where we see those. And I don't think you have to think very hard uh, to identify where we see shadows that are a result of a world that is closed. And then after having that little reflection, then we go into uh, specific questions and so these questions that are listed here, A, B, C, D, um, shattered dreams, um, lacking a plan for everyone. I skipped one. The end of historical consciousness sounds very intellectual, but but it's not. The throwaway world. Some of these themes also are similar that uh, were mentioned in Laudato Si when we're talking about integral ecology, but, but because there's an overlap and they all kind of sort of interrelate. Um, and then universal human rights um so these are again ideas questions to to encourage the conversation after you've watched the video the pope's video um 
and then uh, the conversation will take you to to sort of what is what is what is hindering uh, universal fraternity, yeah. um, and uh, and then you finish off by reflecting on a biblical text. Um, as we did with all the catechesis sessions as well. That, sorry, with the preparatory sessions. And this uh, biblical text from also from the Gospel of Luke. So all the readings have been from the Gospel of Luke. Um, and this was the Good Samaritan, which uh, no surprise there, um, as we are to care for each other. Um, and then uh, there's a little commentary by Pope Francis quoted from the encyclical Fratelli Tutti um, to help people or your participants reflect on uh, on the gospel reading that you just read on the Good Samaritan, and then some some questions there to reflect, or some ideas there to reflect as you continue the the conversation. Um, and then there's a few other suggestions uh, in that there's a section called Believe. Just if you scroll down a little bit more, yeah. um, and and so again, so so what what the the what the organizing committee has done is they prepared something that that's pulling what i really like about these and i liked it about the the catech the I keep calling them catechesis sessions the preparatory sessions is that they're giving you lots of resources from church documents so but very basic so so i remember there's always scripture readings there's always something from the catechism so in this case it's giving you also ideas from other documents this one is from caritas and veritate um, about the Trinity, again, we we think God is a fraternity. The Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, is a fraternity. So when we talk about fraternity, fratelli tutti, social friendship, that we're, we're trying to image. That's an image of the Trinity. So it's very appropriate that we reflect on the Trinity. Um, and then, uh, if you scroll down some more, is where you get the little charts where we fill out. And we did this at the previous session as well, ideas for a world of fraternity. So at a, at a local level, at a kind of more church level, and then at a global level. Well, are there three? Yeah, well, no, yeah, there's only two this time. So it's, oh, there's only two this time. Fraternity between. The yeah, world. so at a level of, oh, okay. So it's, it's uh, the le on the level more of domestic, right? and social coexistence and on the level of, yeah. So So I think it's more on a personal level and then kind of more on a, on a on a on a local global church uh whatever your 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 social sphere is level and then these are this is the information that you use to fill out the form that gets submitted in that we'll show you in a little bit um and then of course you close with a with a prayer and this prayer is right from fratelli tutti by pope francis so it's, it's pretty pretty simple Especially <coughs> start with start with a song yeah. Uh, watch a video, discussion, some ideas for the discussion, uh, scripture reading, uh, something uh, from a church document, and then uh, kind of putting your thoughts down on paper so that you can send it in. Um, I think we also have to consider the fact that this this World Youth Day is happening after a pandemic where we've right. kind of lost that social interaction, that that uh, that care and concern for one another. The, the act of what we refer to in the Catholic social doctrine as solidarity, right? Um, we, we talked about caring for God's creation in the in the first one with the, you know, the integral to ecology and, you know, the, the document of uh, La Dato Si. And now we're focusing on the uh, solidarity element of it, or better yet, of what Pope Francis loves calling accompaniment. We are yeah, that's right. one another here. That's we're right. walking together. Walking together. And I, I almost think of like the story of a road to Emmaus, yeah. like, you know, the, the, what did Jesus do? He walked with them just to yeah, hear them. It. And sometimes that's all we have to do is, is we have to be empathetic and walk with someone. That's evangelization. I mean, yeah. if, if anything, that's what the apostles did in yeah, the first century. So we're it. looking at it, how we do that with the, you know, in, in the economy of our society, with education, with coexistence, right? And we're not talking about like people, you, you're going to disagree with people. That's going to be normal, but how do we act as as people that reflect the very face of Christ? Because we, as the church, we are the face of Christ. When they see you and I, they see the face of Christ. Yeah, um, that's it. you know, are we going to you know show a scarred image of that face 
Or are we going to show the beautiful continents of the face of Christ so that it's welcoming and, and, and affirming and loving? It doesn't mean that we accept the, the dysfunctions of society. It means that we are walking with people regardless of where they're at, That's you know, exactly. and embracing them where they're at and walking them towards that encounter with Christ. Yeah. And it touches every aspect of our life because I think the tendency is to think that it's this is all about friends. How you yeah, yeah, how yeah. you relate with your friends and your social sphere, your friendship. It's not. And if you read the encyclical, it talks about politics and it talks about economy and it talks about, you know, business and how you run your business, because all all those are are affected by how we comport. Is that a good word? How we behave with with each other. And in fact, it's interesting because at the end, if you look at the appendix, the support videos, there's something about the economy of Francis. So that's economics. There's something about education. That's education, you know, in Scuola So Corrente. Like the, the, it's not just about how you hang out with your friends and how you support your friends, but how we support everyone. And if you're a business person, how you conduct your business. If you're a politician, how does this affect you as a politician and how you re represent your people um, that you maybe agree with or not? Um, um, and how, as Dario was saying, more importantly, how we relate to and walk with charity, charitably with people who have completely different, you know, views than we do, or anti-Christian views or hateful views. Yeah. We still are called to walk together with them and be in friendship with them. I mean, just look at part D, a throwaway world. I mean, the, the, the discussion in there, he, he's talking about the issue of, of how abortion has taken it in light, yeah. uh, the, the dangers of abortion, the dangers of the decline of birth rate, the dysfunction of the families. He's looking at how even the idea of how we're struggling with finding identity as an issue, um, you know, how we can try to strive to walk with individuals to hear their story and to better be effective ministers of presence. I think that that's the key word. And I was reflecting on this uh, as, as a word that popped into my mind was what uh, Father Stan Fortuna used to have a song called Family. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys know Father Stan Fortuna. Forget great, about uh, me, I love you. Exactly, right? Forget about me, I love you. That's Fratelli Tutti. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. It's how we forget about ourselves, put ourselves at, at the end of things. I tell that even to my own students. That's it's great. all about forgetting about me and I love you. How do we do that in our society? How do we do that starting in our home? Because it has to start at home first. Yep. Then, it, then to the school, to work, to our communities, to a society as a whole, that's yep. social friendship. And then look at it through fraternity. How do we do that with our economy? Like, how do we do that with how we build, uh, you know, business partnerships and relationships and so on? How do we do that in the educational sphere? Most importantly, how do we coexist? Because we know there are differences. We know that people are all in different pathways. That's Fratelli Tutti. Don't, don't get caught up on what the society might think Fratelli Tutti really is striving to do. Um, it, but it's, it, it, the focus point was we, we need to walk together. And this is why, um, the ver to conclude things, because we're almost out of time here. Yeah, um, there's the form, yeah. To, the form is, again, you go back to the website, the form is right under, it says, after this encounter, fill the form. Uh, from the data you collect as a group, put your group, the diocese, the movement, the age of the participants, the, how many people were there, move next, and then go from there, right? Yeah. Anyways, um, it's pretty self-explanatory. You can't goof it up, right? <laughs> can't goof it up. Anyways, I hope that I hope you were able to enjoy a little session, a little update and a little session on uh, Rise Up Encounter number two. Uh, we'll be back on our next show to look at Rise Up Encounter number three. Um, but that's all the time we have for today. Until next time, guys. Uh, thanks again, uh, Deacon Pedro, for joining. And uh, most importantly, thank you all for listening in uh, from your platforms. Until next time, God bless you guys. See you in Lisbon.